One of the things that I, I saw was that you help couples with a co-parenting agreement. Is that correct? Yeah. What's what's the legality behind that, and how did you even go about drafting something like that? We found some examples online, and then actually work with modern family attorneys that do the actual. I don't, you know, we don't do it right, ourselves. Right. So we, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. provide we provide them with a template, but. We also recommend that they see an attorney to draft the co-parenting agreement, which is kind of a lot like a prenup or something like that, where you discuss, um, it can be as broad or basic as what the custody arrangement's going to be. Are we going to live together? Are we going to live close by? Are we going to be 50-50? Who's responsible for what financially? What the health insurance situation is like? And it can be as in-depth as if someone has a lot of assets or is wealthy, it could be estate planning, it can be life insurance, it can be you know what happens like I have co-parents now that are, you know, quite wealthy or people looking to co-parent and they're like, you know, I'm getting older. I'm thinking of what's going to happen to all this when I'm not here anymore. Is it going to go to my brother's kids or like my right. sister's, you know, kids? And like, I, I've already like paid for their college, like, and I haven't paid for college for my own kid. And I want to have someone to get this to. And I want to have my own child to be able to do this. And it involves conversations with the lawyers and accountants and and things like there's a whole community of people that are there to help with that. Because it's a much more involved process than, like you mentioned before, your average dating app is, you know, you just might hook up or whatever. But yeah, but this is like uh, you're, you're committing to the life of a human being over, right. over the course of this. So it should be a little bit more complicated, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it totally, especially it's not as ironclad as, say, a marriage or divorce. Like if the co-parents decide not to be friends, they, you know, you don't have to give that person 50 percent of whatever you made during that time. But like but I think the more detail you can put in there. There, and there is a situation that you have to go to court or something like that. In most states, the, the judge will look at what the intention was and will do make a ruling that's in the best interest of the child. Right. But it's good to have as much documentation out there to show what you guys were intending to do. Because I've had, um, and not even my family clients, but just people out there in the world. Because now there's like, we have like probably six competitors out there that are doing something similar not as well, I would say, but similar. So, but I've seen stories where, say in Florida, there was a case where a lesbian couple asked their best friend guy who's gay to father the, uh, their children. And he was assuming they were going to co-parent. They had no paperwork, nothing like that. They got pregnant and he was envisioning like taking the kid to Italy to visit his mother in the summer times and all that. And then like halfway through the pregnancy, they're like, they're like wait a minute, they're like, you're not going to be a co-parent. You're just a donor. And he was like, well, that's not what I signed up for. And then he sued them and it took a few years and you know, best friends turned into enemies and now they're, I think, friends again. But then they resolved it where it was the first case where now there's three parents on the birth certificate. And the birth certificate thing is important. Like it, in California too, it matters how you get pregnant. Did you get pregnant at home? Did you get pregnant at the doctor's office? Did you sign a piece of paper? Did you not sign a piece of paper? That can matter if you're responsible for child support or you're just a donor. Um, and every state is different. So I think the laws have a long way to actually catch up. California, it's pretty liberal, but some states, you know, they don't recognize, like, you know, a lesbian couple in many states still can't be, the two moms can't be on the birth certificate. And so I think there needs to be some kind of federal level uh, Yeah, law so stuff. when you said the first case with three parents on the birth certificate, are we talking like first case ever? I think, um, well, definitely in Florida and I think nationally. And it was, this was probably like, five, six years ago or something like that. And, and since then, there have been more cases like that in different states. I had a case also in Canada where a couple that was married, they couldn't have kids. Wife gave them permission to have a co-parent. They didn't sign any paperwork. They rushed into it as well. Like we, we recommend people get to know each other, you know, for at least six months to a year or more. Sure. These people waited like a month and they didn't really know each other. She got pregnant. And then as she was pregnant, she was like, oh, actually, you know, I don't really want a 50-50 co-parent. Like maybe you can see him like once a month or something like that. And he's like, that's not what I signed up for. Right, <laughs> and, uh, right. and then they went to court and I believe they were, I think, I think they got it to like 70, 30 or something like that. I think getting to know the person, developing a trust is that most important thing. And just realize who you're you know, dealing with. Like, ideally, the best situations is where this person ends up as a close friend of yours like a, a, and someone that you trust and you talk to every day and, and you're both there for the same purpose of doing what's best for your child. 